Okay, we're going to start off. This is our agenda for today. Uh, the quorum is met, the members present. You, we're going to review the minutes, uh, approve them from 2023 financials, special recognitions, 2024 highlights, governance, select committees, and in memoriam. So again, our host chapters, for those of you that weren't here yesterday, we recognize the Guadalupe, Hill Country, Lindheimer, and New Braunfels chapters. And then going and checking where the lights could be cut down, there is a host of folks working behind the scenes that were bringing out the food, the refreshments, everything. These chapters did a great job. We owe them a large round of applause. Our mission, again, to, to reinforce, to promote conservation, research, utilization of native plants and plant habitats of Texas through education, outreach, and example. And we've seen that today. We saw it yesterday, how, how we're working together to further this mission. Um, the sponsors, you can't put on a meeting like this without sponsors. Uh, all of them are important. Probably one of the newest things that we've got is this HEB uh, work, well, relationship. You're going to talk about it? Okay. Never hurts to mention all the sponsors. Here's the symposium committee, co-chairs, Gene Wilson, Meg English, all of the uh, speaker committees. Again, it takes, uh, and you're going to announce eventually the host site for next year's meeting. Okay. The suspense is building. Meg's got the answer. So thanks to all of these folks for their behind the scenes work. And here are the minutes, maybe a little hard to read. If there are no corrections, they will stand as submitted. And with that, Mead is going to cover the financials. All right. All right, the button on the right. Okay, I'm nervous about the button because, you know, it's been uh, giving us trouble. Mead LeBlanc, I'm the VP of Finance for the State Board, uh, and I'm going to share the results for you for the last 12 months. So the first slide shows the revenue, and this is for the total society, not just the state, but all the chapters added together. And I'm going to read like a clock. So the big purple one is the income from donations and memberships, and that's been $263,000. And this is, again, the 12 months ended from July 1st of 2023 through June 30th of 2024. That's the most recent 12-month ended period that we have. The next pie slice in the orange is native plant sales. The income from that has been $256,000. So you can see that most of the income for this society comes from those two sources, memberships and unrestricted donations. Unrestricted being that they just give us a check and we can spend it however we, we see fit, both at the state and the chapter level, and then the plant sales. The next slide over from that, the green one is NLCP. That's a very successful program. That brings in about $62,000 a year. And then the next slice from that, the blue one is Symposia, spring and fall, $71,000. And then the purple one, the purple on the left, is income for academic grants and scholarships. And that's been really successful. Uh, the society has received about $72,000 in that 12-month period that the, that the society can then turn around and give out for scholarships and grants for students. Okay. Next slide. Okay, and I'm going to cover just the first. Uh, <laughs> I need an extra hand. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Oh, one back. Okay, the next one there is the expenses. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, the first one there, and this is for the whole society, the blue one, the largest expense for our society is, the, is our salaries. You know, we're pretty much an employee, uh, an employee, a volunteer-run organization, but it does require some full-time and part-time employees for leadership. We've got a full-time director in Meg Inglis. We have four um, part-time uh, employees as well. So it does, as I say, it takes uh, some semblance of, of paid staff to run this organization in addition to all the good work all the volunteers do. Um, the next slice over there is, I'm 
to tell off by a page. Oh. Sorry. All right. I have to read it from here because the, the typing is too small for me and I'm sure it's too small for you. <laughs> but the orange one is grants and donations. So those are funds that have gone back out into the community, $124,000 of grants and donations. Again, that's the states and the chapters and a lot of the staff chapters do give grants and donations. Uh, at the bottom, the gray, that's plants. So, you know, we have income from plant sales, we have to buy the plants or we have to grow them or we have to buy materials to, to cover the plant sales. Um, the yellow on the left is meetings and uh, from symposia and chapters, those are the costs to put those on. And then we have a lot of smaller things, but I just want to point that kind of that from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. There are a lot of other small costs that it takes to run the society. Website, IT work, sim, uh, you know, brochures, publications, insurance, credit card fees. There are just really a lot of other costs that it takes. I just want you to have an appreciation that there are a lot of fixed costs um, that are in place there. And the last slide. And that's cash. And this one shows the cash that's out there as of June 30th. And uh, the chapters have a pretty healthy balance when you add them all up. It's $391,000 that the chapters have in their bank accounts. So get out there, people. Spend that money. Reinvest it in your communities. That's what it's there for. It doesn't do any good sitting in the bank account. And the bottom is the money that's available for education, academic grants, and scholarships, 362000 That's a healthy sum. A big chunk of that is an endowment that was uh, funded. So it's intended to the, for the principal to stay in place and the interest to fund the, uh, some of those scholarships. So that's intended not to be you know, spent the year you receive it. There's a little bit of money. That gray one is money that's restricted for certain purposes. And then at the top left, is the money that the state has in checking and saving accounts that's in the yellow that's 293,000 that's a really healthy balance to make sure that we can continue to pay things like salaries and insurance and um, all those all those fixed costs as well as to reinvest those in other purposes that's my presentation thank you all right which one do i push no, is that backwards? Ricky, why don't you just push it for us? I can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so here are our uh, membership pins or membership recognition, and this we really appreciate people who s keep on being members. And uh, so we have. Uh, what, 213 five years, 65 10 years, 61 15 years? Ah. Uh, anyway, tw and uh, 37 20 years, uh, 31 25 years, 15 30 years, and nine new lifetime members. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so three o'clock. All right. Yeah. Okay, so at the Spring Symposium, we announced the two, uh, 2023 chapter of the year, and it's the Tonkawa chapter. And um, anyway, um, so uh, the, the, uh, col they do collaborations with city and school, uh, District of Salado, their school district historical museum, outdoor classrooms, middle school, Monarch Way Station Gardens, an elementary welcome to school garden. So it's really great. And they've had influence on two developers and uh, they will actually be the host of the 2025 fall symposium. Yay. So uh, you can start planning that now. Yeah. Anyway, three o'clock. All right, so uh, here's our uh, membership contest and the winners this year are the North Central chapter with the greatest growth in numbers and the Beaumont chapter with the greatest percentage growth. So, And then uh, this is really exciting and we hope we have another, you know, more of this in the future. Uh, we have uh, four new chapters forming, the Rio Grande Valley, the Bastrop County uh, Wichita Falls and Galveston County. So that's really exciting and great. And, and that's me. Okay. Next. Oops. 
Yeah, I'll do you. That'd be you. All right. Fine. Oh, All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to give you the highlights of the of the year. Uh, this year is the first year that we reached 5,000 members, individual members for, for the society. And so I just want to say that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And we grew 18% from uh, 2023 to 2024 at this point. So um, very impressive. And by the way, these numbers are the individual members, home members. I know everybody has uh, additional members that, that, that join, but these are home members. Uh, the total membership, maybe this will be easier for me to read, ah, yeah, is um, these are the memberships by level. So you can see how we're divided up. Uh, it's by count as well as percentage. If you look at the percentage, we have the most, uh, the greatest percent is senior and limited income. And that's kind of not surprising. We're, we're on the older spectrum, and we all know it's our duty to uh, talk to our kids and our grandkids and everybody else to try to get them to join. And we do have younger faces coming into this society. So that's, how, that's basically how, how we're broken down. If you look at the bottom business memberships, we're just starting to uh, work in new business memberships. So keep that in mind, vendors in the back. Uh, here are the home chapter memberships. So we have a lot of chapters and a lot of members distributed. So I, uh, Ricky said I'd talk about HEB. We have an initiative uh, that we've uh, had. This is our third initiative that we've uh, collaborated with HEB on. It'll be in this October. And um, we've gone from 10,000 plants last October, which was the first collaboration that we had with HEB. They had four species, uh, 10,000 plants, and 79 stores. But, and in the spring, we had even more species that were sold through HEB. We're working with their wonderful grower, um, and she's just really enthusiastic about this. And we had uh, more, more, uh, more plants. I, not, I don't know the number on that, and we, and we went to 79 stores. And you can see these uh, tags or these uh, on the right-hand side. Those are the tags that went into the plants, and they have our logo on them, and they have a QR code that links the, um, that links the person who shoots the QR code to the exact plant on our plant database. So I think that's just really cool. Yeah. This year, we, we have 15 species. So we've gone from four to 15 species, and we've got, gone from 10,000 to 80,000 plants. Yeah. And 200 plus stores. And a really cool thing that we're doing is we're tabling at 18 of the stores this year, and um, we're, gonna ha we're, we're working with a partner on that. And that is our Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation. Uh, Darcy Bontempo is here representing that organization somewhere. Maybe you could wave your hand. There you are, right there. Darcy's been wonderful. We've been working really hard with her on this. And uh, we're going to have um, hand out Native, Amer Native American seed, prairie seed mixes at the tabling. It's going to be a lot of fun. I wanted to mention that we have a Get on the Map Challenge or collaboration with Homegrown National Park, and we want to add 100 Texas native plant gardens to the map at, by the end of October. This is being handled by Tom Kerwin. We're having a presentation on October 22nd, and so we're hoping that you'll be able to join us then. We'll be getting advertising out this upcoming week. <laughs> We've been working on so many other things. It's been, we've been busy. Uh, and then Laura Leggett, our president-elect, has been really good about getting us involved with Texas Nursery and Landscape Association. For two years in a row, we've gone to their expo. And uh, this year, our expo booth was even bigger. We had a lot of people come by. Uh, we had three native plant presentations. And uh, instead of us being a niche, we are taking over the world. We're going to move in there and convince those people that native plants are the way to go. And then Craig Bruska, um, I don't know where you are, Craig, but Craig's, 
Craig is, uh, he's, he's helped with the speaker. Oh, there he is right there. He's not even raising his hand. He helped with the field trips, and he's single-handedly almost put together this new initiative uh, with the seed libraries. Uh, he's working with all the libraries in the area and all the, he, he should be, he's working with you guys to work with the library. So if you want to start a seed library in your area for your chapter at a, at a library in your area, then you need to talk to C, to, uh, to, to Craig about that. And they're in this, they have, a, they have an article in the Texas Library Journal. I'm just really impressed with that. And we wanted to highlight the Rio Grande Valley chapter. It's our new, one of our newer chapters. It, they just formed this February. They came out like gangbusters. They're working on a native plant center and demo gardens and presentations to the community and working on collaborations with Cameron County. And Robert Guyton has been, uh, you know, the, the energizer bunny of all that, and he's done a great job. I'm sure he's here today too, but he, he's way in the back. He's hiding in the back. Yay, Robert. And then we have, uh, we wanted to highlight San Antonio. They've been working together with uh, uh, the, the nurseries. And I think this is the way we really all need to think, the chapters do anyways, to work with our local nurseries uh, on plant sales and demo demonstration gardens. They've worked with rainbow gardens and pollinatives. And we have Don Gerb, uh, Donald Gerber here with pollinatives somewhere, I'm sure. Um, he should be, he's doing a panel discussion this afternoon. <laughs> but um, so, I'm just really proud of the San Antonio uh, chapter for pulling this stuff together. And, they, and, and there's also an, uh, a little bit about the garden tour that they had in, the, in September. Now I'm going to hand it over to Kim Conroe, our VP of Administration, who's going to talk about governance. Really important topic. And she can make it exciting. Oh, thanks, Meg. Right. Okay. Um, Actually, I'm not the VP administration till the very end of this movie because that's the rule, right? All right, right. We have to have rules. We have to have bureaucracy. We have to have a way to make decisions, and we have to have oversight because it's really important um, to run our organization. So um, this is our governance model. We have a state board of directors. Many of you are new to the society, so this may be your first introduction to this. Uh, the state board meets four times a year. We have standing committee chairs, chapter presidents, and executive officers on our uh, state board. That's over 50 people, y'all, that meet, that do oversight, that, that care about what's going on behind the scenes, that look at the paper and an analyze the data and keep things running so we can be a, a viable 501c3 nonprofit. And as you can see, that uh, we all work in this together and communication is like a web. You are welcome to come to a state board meeting because it's on Zoom, right? And uh, here just are the names of our standing committee chairs that are not executive officers. We have 21 committees and, I th and 13 of them are chaired now by executive officers. That's a lot. Now, some of them are chaired by our standing rules and some of them just are they, they took a committee under their wing. If you want to get involved in the state level, getting on a state committee is a really great place to start doing that. Here's our chapter leaders, and we're going to have more next year. Yay. <laughs> That's great. So here are your directors, presidents of our chapters. And here you have your executive officers. So this, this is actually the officers at the end of this meeting because our newly elected officers magically become empowered at the end of our annual meeting. <laughs> so, uh, and here's the meeting that you can come to. So please do. And um, I've been chairing an ad hoc committee which hopefully will dissolve <laughs> at the end of the next uh, uh, state board meeting, which is November 2nd, you're welcome to come to. And um, last year at the Q4, we approved, no, actually the members voted on our bylaws, but the standing rules are approved by the state board. So, and they are out there. Your chapter presidents have our revised standing rules. They've been put on chapter leader Facebook group. They're in our workplace, which is a virtual office for state leaders 
and committee chairs and committee members and employees, but um, they're out there. Ask for them. They're all, where where are they that the members can find them? They, no. Where have we put them there? Huh? No, I guess we haven't. Okay, my bad. We'll find a place for them. I'll show you in just a second where you can find them, and we'll we'll put them there if you can't get them from your president. Okay. Um, Anyway, we've done other things in governance this year. We've, we've made an executive officer and committee applications. Uh, we have new policies in place, uh, document retention and destruction policy and whistleblower policy. These are important things as we, we grow in membership and become a, a nonprofit who has the stature in, in Texas to really make a difference. We're professionalizing. We're getting better and better every year. Yeah. And <laughs> we have some plant rescue guidelines, and we even have a way to remove a director. Goodness. <laughs> Do your job. Okay. We have to have that, right? And so here's how you can get to this information. And what we'll do, let me guide you through it. We go to our wonderful website, which was new just last year, right? and you, you go to the member portal. You click in there and sorry, you have to make a password and username, but that's the way it is. And member and chapter resources will take you to this column over here, which is called, first we have key documents in there. So there's five folders just full of stuff that you can look through, read it all. You'll know all about the inner workings of the society if you do that. And we'll put the proposed standing rules in that first folder. So, but your first person to go to is your chapter president. Ask your chapter president for a copy of the proposed rev revised standing rules. And if for some reason you can't get it from them, then you can look in there for it after this weekend. Okay, and uh, we have uh, lots of other great things. The records, if you wanna read minutes, <laughs> go there. All the minutes are there, right? And we have, uh, we have minutes from this meeting, so people could have read them, Ricky. They could have. And, and, <laughs> and uh, minutes from state board meetings and minutes from executive committee meetings. And guess what? Now, because we have our documents retention and destruction policy in place, we'll be putting chapter minutes in there and state committee meeting minutes in there. So we can all go look and see what's going on. There's no secrets. Uh, helpful quick links there. Uh, we have our membership with Craig Coulter, administrative assistants, Renata Lucia. They're wonderful staff employees. They do great jobs. We have our in memoriam, which we will see in a minute because we want to honor our past members. But we also have a speaker's bureau, leadership agreement, all kinds of chapter activity reports that go back for years and years and years. They're all in here for you to see. And then um, chapter leader forum recordings for personal and chapter growth. I think that's my last slide. Let's see. Yeah, it's your turn. Am I doing this? Oh, I don't, I don't care. Um, this is our first annual report that we've ever put together. And it's really good. <laughs> Just if I have to say so myself. There's a trifold at the back. If you, haven't, if you haven't gone online and looked in key documents, folder number three, under reports, where the <laughs> you can find this and download it, you can go down there, back there and look at it. It's, it's real size, and um, it's really wonderful. And you'll see the breadth of work that we do in the society. It's, it's amazing. I am amazed at the work that y'all do, at the work that the leadership does. It's incredible. It's an incredible organization. And what else do you want to say about the annual report? Oh, y'all have to go look at that. It's fabulous. Moving on. There you go. This is your turn. <laughs> she thought that was that I wasn't supposed to do the last slide because that's my subcommittee. And here's another subcommittee that I have under planning and development. We're working on our uh, strategy development process. It's taking longer than we thought, but I think we're gonna have something that's really significant in the end. 
Uh, it'll be a process rather than a piece of paper with a list of things to do. It'll be a way for, frankly, for me as executive director to be able to take an opportunity that comes to, my, comes to me uh, via chapters, via members, via outside partners, and make determinations as to whether it's something that's a good fit for our mission in our society. So uh, I, I think it's going to be marvelous, but we're not there yet. And here are our staff members who uh, Renata was talking about. Uh, now we're going to have Laura Leggett. She's going to talk about the next few slides. And Haley will we'll finish up the, the run. Ma'am? Which one is advanced? To that the one. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I told the guy back there, I can look at this and it'll stop working. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, welcome everyone. As we say, we're all volunteers except for the, our few wonderful uh, paid staff. So thank you to everyone here for all the work you do to make our chapters work and for being here today to celebrate that work. Uh, let's see. We have before the magic uh, moment when the new people become officers, we, we have some people to thank who will be um, cycling off the executive committee. Clarence Reed has been our VP of Affiliations and Advocacy and he's worked um, uh, extensively in the Hill Country area as he lives, he lives here with uh, various municipalities and other organizations to further the mission and um, uh, promote our organization as well. So we thank him for his work. I, I don't think Clarence is here today. <laughs> Leanne Smith, uh, I don't believe she's here with us today. She was a VP administration and she had an unexpected career move and physical move across the state, perhaps into another state even. Um, okay, and so she, she was not able to um, continue in that role, but we have a wonderful person coming on board in Kim Conroe for that. Jim Karras as well was our VP of Communications and he had some career opportunities to pursue as well. So he um, uh, stepped down from that role and we'll be welcoming Haley Giambalvo to that role today. And I think most of you know most of these people here. Linda Knowles, our immediate past president. She was up here. Ricky is our current president. I'm president-elect. Uh, Mead, our very capable VP of finance. Amy Birdwell was not able to be here today. She's our vice president of education that um, administers all of those wonderful grants and scholarships that we work on. And she also uh, has the Native Plants in Schools program under her committee and Megan Darty is our VP chapter liaison which especially for all of you new members and new chapters she's the uh, connection on the board for y'all to you know get help or or pass along ideas I'd like to say that's one thing we love to um, see more of this coming years if you have a good idea that's working in your chapter you know let Megan know or if, or if you know one of these other board members personally pass that um, information along because it may be something that could work uh, elsewhere in the state and and we need those ideas and we and when we're just excited to celebrate your great ideas too and as we say the magic moment there's going to be a, a so I guess a bell will go off or something right <laughs> oh the song that's right once we sing the song I'm excited about that song um, anyway we're really excited to have um, Kim, who has served many, many years in so many positions, and uh, we're excited to have her experienced leadership uh, stepping into the role of VP admin. And Haley, um, for those of y'all that weren't at our meeting last year, she won our Digital Media Award last year, and she's just a superior communicator um, and very experienced in, in social media, uh, digital communication. So that's something we are focusing on because that's how the world communicates now. So we're really excited. And she's great at graphics too. So she makes us look pretty on the, on the PowerPoint. So we're really excited to have her stepping into that role. And we thank, thank them both for taking that ro those roles on. Thank you. And these are some of the more behind the scenes um, committee chairs that are important to, as, as Mead said, you know, the professionalism and the um, financial stability of our organization, which allows us to continue to grow. So Betsy Ferris um, is the chair of the audit committee and Jan Hans is, the, is on the committee as well. So they make 
you know, they make sure that we're on track and, and uh, complying with all proper accounting rules and things like that. So we, we thank them for that service. And, you know, there's always more, you know, more the merrier on these committees, you know, because um, people do, you know, things happen and they may have to not be the main person. So if, if you enjoy that kind of work, you know, you, you're not a person that likes to get up here and talk or get out at a tabling event, there's still room for you to um, contribute and we ask you to think about that. So think about those great opportunities there. And then these are all of our, um, st let's see, are these, oh, I'm sorry, this is just Bring Back the Monarchs, okay, which is a big committee, as you can see. Um, you know, this is one of our most visible committees. Uh, hopefully, y'all are all aware of the work that this committee does under the great leadership of Carol Clark. I don't think Carol is here with us today. Um, these are the people that take in all the applications for all those community grants. Um, I think the figures are on the next page. Um, so take a look, I'm not going to read all those names to you, but these people also read all those grant applications and go through them and, um, you know, I think it's about two to one the number of applications we receive and the grants that are awarded. So um, most of them are all um, qualified or eligible, but some of them don't meet the standards of what makes uh, a monarch way station or monarch garden. So they spend a lot of t uh, time carefully reading these um, applications and guiding them, you know, towards the right process. So it's a really intense committee, the work they do this committee. So, and, and are a very visible committee, the work out in the community. So thank you to all those members. So these are, you know, 51 grants went out this year for almost $30,000, and that's directly out in the communities that allow um, all kinds of gardens, you know, at churches, there's one in my community in Wimberley at the local history museum. And so they allow them to purchase the proper native plants for, um, to, to help the monarch migration. So milkweeds and pollinator plants. So those are the various um, types of uh, organizations that, that can apply. And so we encourage you to share this, and there's a brochure, a rat card, I should say, at the back. So take some of those rat cards home and hand them out in your community because um, you have to apply to receive the grant. So we'd love to, to grow that program. Again, uh, communications, I have really, this is uh, Haley's department, but she's done a great job of uh, working with the existing subcommittee chairs that have just created our beautiful website under Craig Dalton's leadership. I don't know if Craig is here today. Is it Craig? Yay, Craig, we have a beautiful website. And I know I saw Stephanie Long here also. She was uh, a big part of the um, architect of creating our new website and Craig is keeping it going. It's, it's beautiful, it's easy to use because I can use it and therefore it's super easy to use. Um, Bill Hopkins keeps our YouTube channels organized and, and easy to use. Bill, is Bill, 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 no. Okay, Bill's not here today. Stephanie, I know I saw you. Yay, Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie, again, if you weren't here last year, I mean, that was an 18 month process, I guess. The whole, I don't even understand it. I think they use the word migration though, migrating from one, one website to another, I, I don't know, but. It's beautiful, and um, as you know, I mean, yeah, social media is more immediate, yes, but people do come back to the website for more in-depth uh, information, and let's see if it's on the next one. Not yet, but it is where our great native plant database is housed, so that has been such a great um, tool for, for us and, and as an outreach tool. Lindsay Townsend, I think is coming later this evening. Um, she is our magazine publisher. Again, we publish the magazine quarterly. Uh, it's an opt-in for members to receive it as a benefit. And then we do print some for, you know, overruns for certain events. So if you have an, a big event coming up in your area um, and you'd like some printed magazines, uh, connect with Lindsay and we can coordinate and see if that's possible. Um, as we said, Robert Gaitan, Energy, Ener Energizer Bunny from the Valley, he's back there. 
uh, is also our Facebook and Instagram chair and uh, doing a great job of keeping the Facebook feed fresh and coordinating with chapters to, to help them uh, get that information out to the local area. So thank you to Lindsay and Robert for their work in this area. Also, I think we're doing a little bit of work with LinkedIn, just to say, that kind of hooks back to TNLA, but we need to work on that. Um, I, I would love to have Haley um, address her <laughs> communication goals. This is Haley Giambalvo, our new, soon to be at the Magic Moment Chair of Communications. So then I'll give it back to you. Haley is the author of the book that we have as a, as a swag giveaway. So if you saw that wonderful little book up at the front next to the mugs, she's the one that put that together. She's a go-getter. Hey, everybody. Uh, so I just started as the VP Communications. I'm so excited to be working with a really great team. And I kind of got into it during one of the busiest months for the society. It turns out everything we do falls in the month of October or April. So it's been very busy. But one thing that we realized we could really benefit from are some more advanced planning processes. When we think about upcoming events like the symposium that happens every year, we can work ahead and starting to promote those things to our chapters earlier on um, and, and really support our chapters with um, uh, promotional materials, social media posts, and things that they can share with their members. So we're going to develop some more standardization for that and better communication with the chapters so they know what they should be promoting when. Um, we also know that we get a ton of pe new people to our website every day now because of our awesome native plant database. It's uh, attributing like 75% of our traffic, I think, and our traffic's been blowing up over the last year to our website. So there's a huge untapped opportunity there to capture those new visitors and get them into our ecosystem to eventually make them um, native plant enthusiasts and members of our society. So a great way to do that is through email. So we're gonna be working with some, um, some email uh, strategies to try to get them to join our, our newsletter and um, do like an email series to, to introduce them to us and to, to get them excited about the Native Plant Society. And then um, also just a lot of opportunities on our website to help out beginners with more how-to content, how to start a native plant garden, um, things like that, video content even, lots more examples of some of uh, members' gardens that they can learn from and be inspired by. So that's some of the things that we have in mind over the upcoming year. Um, once things slow down after, after October, we'll get on uh, working on some of that. But we've got a great team and really excited to, to be part of it. All right, you want me to hand that back? <laughs> and the clicker. Yeah, the clicker. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. This, again, one of our great public outreach um, projects, the I-35 Monarch Way Stations. There are four along I-35 in Bell and Hill County. Um, Bell County is the southern one, right? Around Salado? Yeah, around the Salado areas. Five minutes? I have five minutes? The whole, the whole thing. thing. Oh, okay. Learn about this on our website. I'll, I'll speed up. But we are uh, really happy to say thank you to Tom Olson, who stepped up to be the chair of this committee. Um, and it takes a lot of organization of volunteers. So thank you very much. So those are in Bell County, which is around Salado, and Hill County is up there by Hillsboro, uh, south of the DFW Metroplex. Invasive Plant Committee, another really important committee. I would say the great accomplishment here is also having a live database on our website this year of invasive plants to search. Dee Dee Wright has done um, a great job of organizing the committee, and now Leah Adrian has stepped in as the committee chair. I think all the speakers today talked about the challenge of native, that I'm sorry, the invasive plants um, present to us in our, our environments. So that's the database, similar but different from the native plant database. So <laughs> do check that out. Um, our fantastic NLCP program, I know many of y'all uh, that are here today are in fact teachers in the NLCP program. So those are the stats this year. We reached, we reached almost 1,500 students across the state. Oh, could all our NLCP instructors stand up if, if you're here today? 
and coordinators, everyone that works in NLCP. Yay, thank you so much. And to Linda Foss for her uh, guidance in that program. We have a new Spanish language version of level one ready for testing, and we all know that's a really exciting opportunity in Texas. So thanks to everyone that's worked on this program. And I was talking to one of our vendors about this uh, at the lunch break. We've developed some certification uh, logos that you can use as a business person, as, as just um, a volunteer out in the community to indicate to people that you do have actual trained knowledge and expertise on native plants. So we're really excited to introduce those. And I'm guessing it's somewhere in key documents you could find that logo, right? Uh-oh, all right. Stay tuned. Okay, we'll look for that to come to your inbox. And here again are the um, members of the committee, Linda Foss, our staff coordinator, and our great committee of, of volunteers that work very hard, and also the chapters there that actually host NLCP. If your chapter has not hosted NLCP yet and you're interested, please visit with Meg or Linda Foss. She is here today. Um, and it, it's a process to get going, but the more chapters we have offering it, the greater our, our impact in the Texas, in Texas. All right, and now I'm turning it back over to Haley. All right, real quick, I'm gonna talk about uh, our Native Plants in Schools program. So I am giving a presentation on this at three o'clock today. So hopefully lots of you are coming because I'll go in depth on it. But uh, we've been really busy over the last year trying to create resources for you all to use if you have a school in your area that reaches out to you and said, hey, we wanna start a Native Plant Garden, but we don't know what to do. We, we've got lots of things that you can provide them with beyond just showing up at their school and helping them do it in a hands-on way. There's, we've got a, a starter guide with some steps on how to start a garden. We've got lots of school examples. We're trying to create a library of, of examples across the state. We have a short presentation that you can go to a classroom and give to students. It's, it's geared toward kids, elementary and middle school age, to, to introduce them to native plants. And then we've started a list of curriculum and activities um, kind of grouped by different topics like seeds or water quality or uh, pollinators, the things that are already available from other organizations on the web that we've kind of curated for teachers and for you all um, if you're asked to do a little um, type of activity with students. So check that out. That's on our website under programs. Um, something else that we've been working on that we're really excited about is our first ever middle school native, native plant research contest called the Force of Nature. This is an idea of, uh, that came out of uh, the Tonkawa chapter with Linda Griffith, their president, and a school uh, that they work with there. And we're excited to announce we had 21 middle schools across Texas sign up to do that. So, yay! Um, the, the sign up period ended at the end of September and now they have the rest of the school year really through the end of March to come up with their research idea. It's very broad. They can research anything related to Texas native plants, conduct an experiment, uh, start a garden, use it as a, a place to observe things happening. And then they're going to put together a presentation um, that our committee will judge and we'll have a, a winner come out of that. So super excited about that. We've got a great committee. We're always looking for new members. So if you're interested in helping us develop content for Native Plants in Schools, please reach out. Uh, we also have our fantastic NICE program that's headed up by Claire Sorensen, and it is in high demand. It looks like it has pretty much doubled in size over the past year. We've gone from 12 to 22 chapters with NICE programs. And lots of nurseries are looking to become NICE partners. We have gone from 34 to 66 nurseries, and you can see them all on our website. We've got a NICE map where you can look at what the NICE partner nurseries are uh, in your area. In addition, they've been developing more um, promotional content. There's a rack card that you can get at the back of the room. Uh, they've done some, some uh, rack cards and posters specifically for Native Plant Month that was recently sent out to all the chapter leaders so you can print them off and use them with your NICE partners. So they're doing a lot there, leveraging the Native Plant Database to create customized uh, plant lists, um, all sorts of things. So really cool program. And then our Grants and Scholarships uh, Committee, which is led by Amy Birdwell, they are in charge of uh, 
uh, administering a few of our um, academic awards. So the first one I'll talk about real quick is our graduate research grant, the Ann Miller Gonzalez grant. That is still, um, the application period is open for a few more days up until October 15th. So if you know of a graduate student that would like to conduct research related to Texas native plants, let them know about this, um, this opportunity. We had four recipients last year. We also have the Kate Hillhouse Scholarship named after a, a prior uh, president of NITSOT and all of our silent auction proceeds are going to this scholarship. It is for undergraduates that are interested in careers related to Texas native plants. And then lastly, the Dr. Alfred Richardson Scholarship. This one is a tuition scholarship that awards up to 5,000 per semester for four semesters for undergraduate students. Um, we had three recipients last year, so very cool programs. There is a rack card in the back. Um, that talks all about them and has a QR code that'll take you to the website with all the information on deadlines and things for those scholarships. And then our Speakers Bureau is another great resource on the site. We have speakers all across the state. Oh, okay, Esmeralda Fisher is the chair. She's here, where, where are you at? Thank you, Esmeralda, so much. <clears throat> It's a great resource um, that you can look for. If you're looking for a new speaker, check out um, that area of the website. I believe it's under resources. And then also, if you're interested in being a speaker, you can go through the member portal and um, check out the new speakers forum there. Okay, lastly, uh, Texas Native Plant Week is coming up on the 20th. We've got all sorts of initiatives for that. We do our annual bio blitz of, of te Texas Native plants, pollinators, and encourage you to, to come up with a BioBlitz activity for your chapter. We've got uh, promotional materials you can use to, to promote that to your members. We also have our uh, hashtag campaign that uh, Laura Zarate created last year uh, that we will be promoting again each day of the week um, starting on the 20th. There's a different theme for each day just to get your uh, members and the public talking about Native Plant Week and these different areas of conservation and it's a fun way to get everyone involved so stay tuned for that. Oopsie. And then Meg already mentioned this but really want to emphasize we would love to get all of your gardens on the homegrown national park map and have them linked to the native plant society so they can see the impact that our gardens are making to increase biodiversity so you'll be hearing more on that too all right The native plants of Texas are the only plants for me. They grow high up in the mountains, cross the plains down to the sea. From Red River to the Rio Grande, Big Bend to the Gulf of Mexico. The native plants of Texas are the best plants you will know. Blue bonnets on the roadsides, burst into the blooms of blue and bold. Indian blankets, Mexican hats, turn that blue to red and gold. 
There's a rainbow of colors in biodiversity, and the native plants of Texas are the best for you and me. The native plants of Texas are the only plants for me. They grow high up in the mountains, cross the plains and down the sea. From Red River to the Rio Grande, Big Bend to the Gulf of Mexico. The native plants of Texas are the best plants you will know. The native plants of Texas are the only plants I'll grow. Yeah, and get down with Brown, too. We have a question right here. Oh. The, uh, these, this this is, uh, will be available to you. This whole presentation and all of them will be sent out to you a couple of weeks after this event, and you should be able to do that. And it's also in the key documents. All right, hold on. I want to talk. Thanks for letting me talk, Meg. Okay. <laughs> The key documents, y'all, they're the key. You think this is not key? This is key. Key. So go to key documents. I think it's folder four, onboarding, and you can find a page on this that has the words and the link to the YouTube. So you can download it and you can show it at all your chapter meetings. Yeah, isn't that fun? Okay, we got four minutes to go. And then we need to, um, they have to what? What? Oh, we have to give the magic wand. No. Oh. All right. Uh, it's time to go, guys. Out into the halls, down to the garden rooms, 101. Uh, what? I'm oh, we're going next year to Salado. Linda Knowles announced it. 2025 is Salado, Texas, where Tonkawa is the chapter that's hosting it.